There are four rules we can use to improve our writing by simplifying it. For me, I use all of these together to guarantee great writing. Rule number one is to use specific words. And to use this rule, we want to change any generalized terms we have in our writing to specific ones. A great example of this is the word things. Most of the time, the thing has a name. And if the thing has a name, we should use that name. And even if it didn't, the word items or objects is better than the word things. It's more specific. For example, if I wrote, I went to the supermarket to buy some things. Well, that's not correct. I didn't actually go to the supermarket to buy some things. I went to the supermarket to buy something specific. We could fix that sentence by saying, I went to the supermarket to buy some fruit. Or even better, I went to the supermarket to buy some watermelon. That's even more specific. And it makes it really easy for my reader to build that visual picture in their mind. Whereas if I give them the generalized term of things, it's open to interpretation and that can lead the reader to disengage with our writing because then they have to interpret and develop the visual picture themselves. By building specific words into our sentence, we make it easier and faster for the reader to build that visual picture and stay engaged in our writing and want to read more of it. Another example is where we can have a scale of terms. For example, cold, very cold, extremely cold. Well, the word freezing is more specific. We can imagine what that cold temperature felt like, but if you just say very cold, well, what's very cold? <laughs> Do I need a jumper? Do I need a jumper and a puffer jacket? Do I need thermals? <laughs> Am I in the snow? How cold is it? The more specific our words are, clearer our sentences are, and the more engaging our writing is. Rule number two is to use less words. Sometimes when we start writing, we can get caught up in this trap of using fluff words and filler content to try and bulk out our sentences, when in reality, it would be far better if we had less words that were more impactful. We often add these in because we've read them somewhere else before, but just because we've read them in other people's writing doesn't mean that that writing was good or that we should add those sentences or words into our own writing. Furthermore is a great example of this. I often see it in writing where it's not needed and it adds no value to the sentence. It's just a bulky and clunky word that disengages the reader. Some other really common filler content phrases that I see in writing are in the nature of, as a matter of fact. Needless to say that. In spite of the fact that. Some kind of can you see all these phrases have the same problem? These words actually don't mean anything and they don't add value to our sentences when we put them in. We can just remove all of these words from our writing. We don't even have to replace them with other words. We can simply remove them. The fewer words we can use, the better to get our point across because it means the reader has a clearer picture in their mind and our main point isn't getting lost in a sea of words. For example, we would never want to say, it is the nature of dogs to bark. That doesn't even mean anything. Dogs bark. We all know that dogs bark. We don't need to say it is the nature of. Seriously, you can just delete all fluff words and filler content. The easiest way I've found to apply this rule is once I've written a draft of something, I come back through and I read each sentence. If there are words in that sentence that I can remove and the sentence still makes sense, then I remove them, all of them. The less words, the better. Most great sentences are between 10 and 25 words, no more. And in some cases, some of the best sentences I've ever read are only six words. Which brings us to rule number three, which is to use better words. By using the best words possible, possible, it makes it faster for us to write and easier for our reader to understand. The best way I've found to do this is by getting rid of ambiguous, intensifying or activating words. For example, absolutely, completely, totally, utterly, highly or extremely. Can you see all of these words have the same problem? They don't mean anything by themselves. They need to be attached to another word to mean anything. To improve our writing, we can simply remove both of those words and replace it with a better one. For example, completely confused could be replaced with the word perplexed. It's a much better word. Totally dry could be replaced with arid. We could replace extremely difficult with arid arduous and utterly happy with ecstatic. So by using the best words possible in all of our sentences, we make it faster for us to write, easier for us to edit, and much better for our reader to understand. It really makes our writing clear and powerful. So rule number four is to use one word. And this is probably not a rule that you've ever heard of. It's to not use tautologies. Tautologies are where we use two or more words that have the same meaning. Now, even if you haven't heard the word tautology before, I can guarantee that you've read some of these before and probably use them in your writing too. Some really common examples are vast expanse, right? They mean the same thing, vast and expanse. Joined together, well, if they're together, then they're joined, and if they're joined, then they're together. They mean the same thing. Now, the trick to fixing tautologies is just to remove the extra word and just pick one word. And that one word will then have more impact in our writing. For example, I personally, we don't need both of those words. We can pick one. So we can say I, and then the sentence, or personally, and then the sentence. Some other really great examples of this are new discovery. Well, if it's a discovery, then it has to be new. So you can just get rid of one of those words. And we wouldn't want to say in a sentence, we made a new discovery. We made a discovery, or we discovered even better. It's shorter. 
But sometimes tautologies can be more than two words. And sometimes this means rather than just picking which word we want to keep, there's only one possible option. For example, red in color. That's a tautology because red is a color. So we don't need the words in color. So we would remove them and keep the word red. We couldn't keep the words in color and get rid of red because then it wouldn't make sense. Some other ones that you've probably read are brief summary, positive benefit, because I'm pretty sure if it's a benefit, it's a positive, not a negative. We don't need that extra word. It doesn't actually clarify our point anymore. By simplifying it and picking one word, that one word will have more power in our writing. We can obviously use each of these rules by themselves to improve our writing and certainly also to improve our editing skills. But it's by using all four of these together that we can guarantee our writing is clear and easy to understand, which are the keys great writing.